what I do is I start them off with a saw cut. Also, what's nice with that, you can turn it upside down and have a look at it and check your accuracy, see if you if you like where your claw's gonna go. They do tend to look different, like one side might look all right, and another way it looks kind of wrong. So I rotate it and have a look at it at all angles, and see if it needs improving anywhere. A cylinder phrase. Just started one off, just looking at it from the side. Get your wire for your claw. Put it in the groove to check I'm not going too deep. The stone sat in there horizontal on a bezel. It's not quite touching. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit more. My angle for my claw is going to be the same as that, that angle there. Just got to go in and do it. But it's not the end of the world if you've got a, to get it correct on a stone. If you've got to phrase it out a little bit more towards the top half or a little bit more the bottom half just to change that angle a little bit, that's not the end of the world. You're allowed to do that. Uh, as long as it's not too extreme. Um, yeah, and just go in until it's sort of touching touching the stone. And the stone, you can phrase out the uh, under bezel a bit so the stone drops down. And because of these, the claws are going inwards. As it drops down, you'll need to cut into the claw more to set the stone. Do you know what I mean? Like as it gets lower, it's going to come down closer. So um, I think it's nice just to get it, get it touching the stone now or even lifting a stone up ever so slightly and then as it's set it'll be clipped in nice and snugly and the claw will not need to be bent over i really hate that look it just to me it just looks like someone didn't know what they're doing when they made it and made it all the wrong size so it's nice if the claw just sits perfectly straight and the stone is is set well okay i did it I marked them out with a 1mm, just open them up with a 1.2mm phrase now. It's a good job, I did actually make a, a few adjustments. So you can mark them out absolutely perfectly, but then you still need to be able to cut them in that position. And where these cylinder phrases and things drag one way, you can start accidentally pulling things about. I think uh, I think we got it now. Obviously, just got to make them all all the same angle, all the same size, in the correct positions. So I've just holded my claw in position against the bezel with tweezers. Got the toggle on there, just gently squeezing the tweezers closed. Uh, when you do this, check, look at it from that way, make sure, because you've got a nice straight bit of wire there, um, just have the minimum amount hanging over the bottom. Be careful, it's been snipped, you've got that flat edge, you don't want that ruining the side of your claw, so make sure all of the snipped kind of angled bit is over the edge. Um, yeah, holding that in position, and then that needs tweaking that way a little bit, just to hold it so it's dead straight. And then that is ready for soldering, and I will literally just balance that in there. Solder it in there. This way, obviously. <laughs> there you go. Solder that in position. And I, I know a lot of jewelers, I've seen them on YouTube, some like big channels, they snip off all the claws individually. I don't like doing that. Um, and they don't even look like, like a straight bit of wire sometimes. Really got to have straight wire, and I like it like this because less wastage. You're wasting the minimum amount because you can see exactly what you're wasting off the bottom and then you can once this is soldered on i put the stone in position and then just cut it off exactly the right length if you cut them out individually there's a chance you're making them way too long or you might balls up and make them too short which is a total waste of wire uh do it this way just do one individually it's the minimum wastage and the most sensible way to go so i just soldered that on uh my advice is have it held in tweezers like I did, put your solder there, like on top of the bezel, and then try and pull it across. And it should flood from there. If you're heating it from this side, it should hopefully just flood down each side of the claw. Mine did, but didn't add quite enough. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more, and it should flood down the sides, and then you wanna be looking underneath it as well, make sure it's flooded around the bottom. You can see mine is uh, sitting flat, 
claw is just touching so when the stone drops down it will be set quite nicely and then also you can't see it from the top so that's what I'm aiming to do on all four claws so checking your angles yeah tilt it towards you like that so we're moving it this way until it's completely flat to your eye and then rotate it so the one in front should be exactly blocking the one behind it while it's dead straight and dead in the middle that's how you're checking they're both the same and then obviously from the side you want these angles the same and this claw's a bit longer so it might throw your eye off a little bit but i'm quite happy with these angles okay third claw third claw that solder joint was delicious look how neat that is it's just like a little beaded edge both sides and flooded underneath around the claw but anyway uh, you've got to check angles so again see so rotating it this way to make sure the top is and the bottom are flat make sure it's directly facing you and you rotate it and that claw in front of it it should they should sort of get that uh what's it called equinox horizon eclipse there you go <laughs> yeah you should have an eclipse of the claw <laughs> directly over it perfectly parallel horizontal whatever the words are and other mathematical words that I don't know and also go in making sure it's directly up and down vertical and directly in the middle of the other two uh, making life easy for myself for always trying to be accurate if you phrased it wrong and then you have had to hold the claw out at a wrong angle and then solder it it's more likely to fall off and be a problem when you're soldering the other claws as well but I'm able to make things like this in silver because all the parts are sort of seated in nicely in their position. If you're kind of filling gaps with solder, it can get very messy very quickly. Like you're trying to heat something up next to it and it'll just fall off. Just want to show you this. If you're struggling to get your claws in the correct position, watch this. Pick that up. Pick that up. Tweezers. Boom, correct position. If you're struggling to get your claw in the correct position, it's because your previous steps, you've done them inaccurately. Uh, you just need to work more carefully. Um, it's not the end of the world if you need to adjust that. You just, obviously if mine's clicking in position and sitting like that, I can just phrase it out a little bit more. Uh, being very careful not to keep going deeper and deeper. Always just adjust it how you want it, but don't push the phrase right in. Otherwise you're just gonna go in more and more and more and then you're ruining it another way by trying to correct it another way. Um, so yeah, I've said it before on my channel, I, I make life easy for myself by at every step working accurately and constantly testing it as well. I don't just make it till I'm happy with it and then I don't look at it again, like keeping everything in mind and uh, double checking things over and over. Like even now, like looking at the other claws, like checking I still like the angles they are because you can have four claws on here and I may have got to this stage thinking everything's great but then you get one claw that's slightly out and it can ruin the whole thing and it's quite difficult sometimes to actually spot what's making it look wrong so that's my main tip is just work accurately always work accurately and slow right down until you can get it right so the back i'm gonna file it flat be very careful with your claws probably cut them short first <laughs> give me a bloody file that works this one's so new I haven't even put a handle on it how's that just saw itself on camera for the first time. I always rotate it when I do this. 
just to make sure to protect myself from myself because you tend to push the file this way or this way is actually quite a difficult thing to hold it perfectly flat. So you can even push that way a little bit on purpose and by and then just rotate it around doing the same. There you go. So that when it's filed up as well, that shows up any uh, inaccuracies quite severely, um, quite unforgiving. So obviously the, if one claws in more than the other, it's gonna really show up at this stage. Another thing, another thing where these templates are handy, if you've got circles with the four points drawn in, not only are they useful for actually putting your initial markings on a piece, uh, you can double check your accuracies on things as well. So this is a nice little moment we've been working towards, bringing the two completed pieces together. Uh, you can choose to solder the claws of the centre one against the claws of that one, which I could do, and it'll sit up really high. I don't want that. I wanted to sit down a little bit in between them. I think it works quite nicely. Uh, I quite like the height that's sitting. So I want to turn it around, looking at the back, how I can join it. I should be able to, without too much difficulty, touch a little bit of solder against the side of the claw there and then get it, get it solder in position. I don't know, when I cut the use off, I have a closer look. But so far, I'm quite happy with that. I think it's gonna work quite well. And then we need to do, it's a pendant, remember, so we need to do some kind of loop for the chain to go through. So to tidy up this bit, uh, put your stone in, just double check, just have another look before you cut a claw down. But basically, you're gonna cut them all down, uh, giving yourself a bit of extra length to make setting them a bit easier, and then also, but not leaving them too long that you're just wasting metal. They're not too short, obviously, because that's no good. So I, I always just put a mark, I put the stone in and I put a mark on one and then cut them all down to the same height. I always find the paper discs are best for this. You just look at them from the side and then just match them up. It's not too important, they've got to be really identical, but it makes sense to get them all the same, same-ish. I don't, I don't measure them just by eye, they've got to be the same. I'm gonna give that little center collet a bit of attention, a bit of love, making sure there's no little lumps of solder anywhere, any awkward little file marks. Be careful when you're putting your files on it, you don't want to end up putting a nick in a claw. Okay, my soldering is super neat if I do say so myself, but still can improve it with a rubber wheel. rubber wheeling the um, solder line away gets it really sharp and then after polishing it'll just look really crisp and nice bit of a lump on this one it's a real delicate operation to cut it sharp but not cut too much away Mini wizard. What's that? Got a rat tail file somewhere. It doesn't get used very often. It's all dusty. But now, it's going to come in well handy just for making that round in there. Et voilà. So there's my center collet. So put them together. I think the one I saw in the shop, I'm sure the claws of the center stone 
I can't remember, there's, I'm sure there's quite a big gap around it, so I can't remember whether it was attached by the claws or whether there was an extra little kind of pip of metal coming off the claws. Um, but yeah, that one was like top, bottom, left, right, which I don't like. It looks too much like a, like a logo of some sort of charity or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I just feel like having it that way, uh, with the claws going, like drawn across in the middle as it sits, like top, bottom of the halo, and then I had to sort of imagine a cross going across the claws there. That's more like a piece of jewellery that I would design, so I'm doing mine like that. So that's going to be the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a just a small, simple little round ring, a little jump ring I'll make, and then that way, I like the way the chain would come right down to it, and then off it when it's hanging on a chain. Uh, you could do a big fancy loop, but I don't really like big hanging loops, because the chain kind of goes up to there, and it's like the whole piece drops down, like it's something separate somehow. I don't know. Uh, it's just not my preference. It's the same time, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just whatever you like the look of. Uh, actually, I would much prefer if the chain sort of went through the back somehow, which we could totally do with a sort of a fancy loop on the back. Problem is when you've got a loop hanging off the back, it can be prone to tilting forward when it's hanging off, when the chain's going through it right at the back. Just the weight of the piece, it can sort of slightly tilt, be prone to tilting back. Uh, I'm going to put my ring on the top half there, like right on the bottom of the claw, like where the claw, basically the top of the plate. So, so it's going to be as forward as possible, really, without disturbing any ability to set. And I should have no trouble, it should hang nice and straight, which are things you've got to consider when you're putting loops and stuff on pendants. Just made my jump ring, I wrapped it around a little bit of metal I've got. Where is it? This. This is like 1.6, that's enough for my thin trace chains I like using to go through. I use the diamond cut trace chains because they kind of sparkle, so they look good on a piece of jewellery and they're very strong as well. Um, top tip for you when you're making especially smaller jump rings, cut them open with a really thin saw blade because the thickness, the width of the saw blade is taking a bit of metal out of it and it's ruining your circumference. So now it's a perfect circle, but if you cut it open with a thick saw blade, uh, once you close it up, it's going to be slightly oval. Some important nuggets of advice. Uh, when you're doing a hanging ring, or any kind of ring on a pendant where something's going to be attached to it or a chain's going through it, it's got to be really strong and done properly. It's got to be done properly. Like, if someone's paid 20 grand for a pendant and they lose it because the ring became unattached while they're wearing it, you're in big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. Right, so the way I ensure I get a good join. Um, I file a flat on it. You could technically file that flat all the way up to the inner hole. Uh, right up to it, right up to the point where it breaks through. And all you've done is made a, a really big flat, which is a bigger surface area. So it means the ring is going to be stronger. I don't do that. I go like two thirds of the way through. Obviously, the more you file, the wider that flat gets, and then you've got to consider what it's joining onto. Is there enough space for it? So that's about right for me. Look at it from the side, make sure you've got it all horizontal, not tilted. Um, it's going on a round claw, so I will use a cylinder phrase and put a little round, rounded groove on that. Do it carefully and neatly, make sure it's going down the middle. Okay. Hold on my tweezers. I put a mark on my claws I chose to use. This is handmade, so there are there is a chance, even though it looks very, very neat and accurate at first glance, when you really study it, you might find as you rotate it, there's one way you think it looks its best uh, that way up. So I did that and I chose these claws at the top. So I put a little mark on them. So now I just, I can touch that on there, making sure it's gonna fit okay. And yeah, I can, it's gonna fit nicely. I'll put it there it's just, so the center of that hole is just above the center of the side flat on the top plate. 
and uh, looking at it, I think it's going to hang correctly. Obviously, you can't go too high up because then you balls up your claw. You can't really set it, set the stones very well if you've got a big ring on the side. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to touch a bit of solder on that and then I'm going to hold this in position and plonk them on as I get it hot, which is my style of making things. If you haven't done that kind of technique before, maybe you should set it up so it's just sat in position with tweezers or something holding it there. Um, it's something I've got good at over the years, so if you haven't done it before, maybe get some practice before you work on something you've spent like four or five hours making. If you cut yourself some little panels of solder and there's one that's slightly too big or one slightly too small, always go for the slightly too big one because this has got to be soldered really strong. So you're much better off, off, better off having a bit of a blobby solder join. At least you know it's really proper on there. And then you can always cut it back and if you've got rubber wheels, you can make it perfectly neat again. But definitely go for the too bigger option. Right, I've actually put two tiny bits on there. And I've got the fan blowing on me as well, just to make soldering a little bit harder. If you made your piece in hard or medium solder, that would be great. You can use easy solder now, it'll help you out a lot. Unfortunately, I've only got hard and easy, and this silver hard solder melts just before the silver melts. It was too risky using it for this piece. So I've done the whole thing in easy solder. So I'm running on risky biscuits at the moment to put this on, but I won't have a problem. I was mentioned earlier about having a, when you're gonna hold something in position and solder it, have a little trial run before you're mucking about with a, a lit blowtorch. So I'm making sure that ring's at the right angle, uh, not crushing it too hard with my tweezers. Cause you know, silver, if that gets hot, just tweezers will just squash it. Um, yeah, make sure I can comfortably put it, hold it in position where I want it to solder and looking, looking at all angles as well, so I'll give a trial run. So I think it's going to be alright. Unfortunately I can't light, it's one-handed. Oh my god. Let's flux this a little bit. You can tweak it a little bit if it goes on slightly the wrong angle, but Ideally, you want to get it right in the middle and straight, so you don't have to muck about. After it floods, I always hold it just like a little second or two seconds, just to doubly make sure it's set hard before I move it again. So there you go, soldered that on, just a little ring like that, a chain can run through. Get your 10 times loop and look around it and make sure that solder is definitely flooded all the way through, all the way around it. Um, you can always neaten up inside the hole with the ball phrase, get your rubber wheel down the side, it'd be, uh, be a perfect little thing. So something like that is finished. Uh, like I said before, I can't remember how the chain was attached to the one I saw in the shop, but not too important, I just wanted it like this, just something very simple. Uh, you could always have a little slightly bigger loop and set some diamonds on top of it, but I think that kind of ruins the design. You just want this circle of diamonds. So that is essentially it. I'm looking forward to going back to that shop in the future and I'll get a crafty photo of it so I can mention it again in a future video and then we can compare this finished one to, to what I saw. Um, but then, also to mention again, wasn't really seriously trying to copy it exactly, I just work into the stones that I had and make something kind of similar. Um, so okay, let's cut these loops off, which what I've done is I've cut them all off with my little cut-off wheel. Just getting them down a little bit closer to the metal and then I'll go around it with a flattened rubber wheel. Uh, I think that's the best way for me and the way I work you may be able to carefully saw them off. Be very careful not to hit your plate. You could thread a saw blade in, chop it out, two different angles, it might be all right. And then use your ball phrases or any kind of like phrase to 
get down. Ball phrase might be quite good actually. Just be careful if it catches and wraps around, you're going to ruin it. So whatever you use, just go careful. All right, take your time doing this. There's no sprint to the finish line when you're hand making jewelry. If anything, you slow down more and more and more as you get to the end. Just really making little tweaks, just trying to get more and more perfection out of it. I'm going very carefully now. These claws are right down. I really don't want to touch that plate at all. Like, shouldn't need to. It's a little bit tricky because you've got that kind of angle on it. It's like a little dish. Just trying to get them evenly flat and the same height all the way around. And then I'm going to flatten a rubber wheel and go around it with that. I should be able to get it down to down to the surface. See that looks all ground out and horrible because we're doing it with uh, that. Rubber wheel wasn't really touching it that much so I've got a paper disc, I cut it down by spinning it and putting a knife blade in the back and then it just cuts out perfect circle. So I'm gonna put that in there, that in there, there you go, wall up. Working around that jump ring is quite difficult. So I soldered it on with less risk, but because I left all the U's on, but now it's there, it's getting in my way when I'm trying to clean up the back. I'm just going around it now from the outside and not this angle, this angle because uh, there's a few spots where I've put a little concave dip in it. I'm just evening it out a little bit more. See there, I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's like a, a dip in the centre. So this angle gets, gets rid of that. So just off camera, I went round it with a ball phrase, just touched in the holes, like rounded off the back holes a little bit, uh, and just papered over it a little bit for a final time. I'm um, getting it all super neat, so that's ready for joining inside now. I and mean, that alone is a nice little pendant. And filling that hole in the middle with something big and special is quite an amazing piece. Uh, now this video, just to remind you, it's just me testing myself whether I can make see something very quickly, five, six seconds, and then know how to make it, which I think I've done. And finally, I can call it finished. Well, the mount is finished anyway, it's got to be set, of course. Um, I've been doing this since like four or five days now, so the fifth day. That's not five days work, but I've only got a few hours free in the afternoons, and quite often in, the, in that time I've got to do other stuff as well, so I've been coming and going on this job. For, for nearly a week. But yeah, I like it, that as a pendant. I think that's quite a sweet thing. Sweet, it's like 100 grand pendant if that was diamonds. Um, the only thing I would change if I was really doing this, like if this was like a commission for a proper diamond piece, I would definitely have gallery wire on the back. It just makes it a much more classy, more finished correctly thing. Um, having that kind of dishy effect on the back is quite nice, but I think it needs like a, an edge either joined onto that or I would I would have like the daylight hole a proper proper gallery on there which is a lot of extra work but definitely worth it if you're making a hundred grand piece you need to put the work in and do it properly but yeah that's nice I like that 
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, if you're not making it and you just watch the video to see how things are made, I hope you, you learned something and it was interesting for you to see, see what goes on making handmade things like that. Um, a lot of fiddly little, little repetitive workings to, to end up with that and uh, just work slowly and accurately and you get to the end eventually. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned, hit the notification bell because I'm uploading soon. Maybe I would love to do more of these full instructional videos, but they are quite time consuming and difficult to get through to the end. But uh, I do enjoy doing them, but they're a lot of work, so I can't always do them. So yeah, anyway, stay tuned. I'll get some more videos coming up very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. I think I may have mentioned before the bugs in Japan are massive. This is called a semi. That's my hand. Tell us how big it is. Ooh.